What's going on? Hey, Love Tribe. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you've listened to the last couple episodes, you'll already know about our new Love Tribe membership, where you become a member. You can simply support the show for $2 a month or for $7 a month. You get ad-free episodes plus the bonus questions at the end of every episode where we provide super actionable tips from our guests and uh, we're getting great feedback about that section and I really like it because the tips are just like here's what it is do this on a daily basis yeah and you can apply it to your relationship and then our top tier ten dollars a month you get all that plus a completely new episode bonus episode every month that our Insider Plus members can vote on, provide input, and really help us decide what the topics and guests will be for those shows. So check that out in the description of this podcast. Click the link. You can sign up in the press of a button or on our website, idopodcast.com slash subscribe. And it really is that easy. If you have Apple Pay or Google Pay set up on your phone, you literally just click sign up. And it automatically gets delivered to your inbox or anywhere you're listening to your episode. Yep. And it goes into your feed and it's a private members only feed. And of course, if you don't love the content, you can cancel at any time. It's super easy. And it's just a way for you guys to support the show. Help us buy that new audio mixer that we just found out we needed and really connect and get more great relationship advice content. Yeah, we love it. And we hope you guys do too. So on today's episode, we have Dr. Marnie Feuerman, and she is a licensed psychotherapist in private practice in South Florida. And she is a nationally recognized relationship and marriage expert with specialized training in couples therapy. And Dr. Marnie also released a self-help book for women who struggle with repeated unhealthy relationship patterns titled Ghosted and Breadcrumbed, Stop Falling for Unavailable Men and Get Smart About Healthy Relationships. And in today's show, we talk with Dr. Marnie about passive aggressiveness in relationships. And if you've been exposed to it, It is not something fun to do, and I'm not saying Sarah is passive-aggressive. I'm usually the culprit (laughs) in the past, and so there's valuable information for both partners in in these kind of situations where I learned how to become more aware of it and to talk about it, and Sarah got information on how to approach the subject to make a partner more aware of it and navigate this communication issue and it can really be a negative feeling and create a lot of negativity. So Marnie gives us some great tools to to deal with passive aggressiveness. And as always, we appreciate you guys listening, tuning in, subscribing to the show, becoming a Love Tribe member for that additional great content, ad-free episodes, telling your friends and family, we appreciate you guys. Enjoy the show. Today's show is brought to you by our online course, Spark My Relationship. Create more passion, improve your communication, and build a stronger, more intimate connection with your partner in less than 90 days. We've collaborated with 15 therapists and psychologists to bring you the strategies marriage therapists teach their clients. To unlock a special offer only for I Do Podcast listeners, visit sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. That's sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. Hi, Marnie. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. Hi, thank you. Great to be here. Today, we're going to talk about passive aggressiveness. And it's something I am definitely have been guilty of and something that I've been on the receiving end, not particularly with Sarah at all, really, but from family stuff. And it just does not make me feel good. And so (laughs) I don't like doing it. I think it's something I've, I've worked on and hopefully gotten out of my system. But we're going to talk about that and how we can help people that are exhibiting it and on the receiving end. So why don't we start by having you tell us what passive aggressiveness is and how it's used. And then we'll talk about how we can navigate it with our partner to hopefully get it out of the relationship. 
Yes, that's exactly what we want to do. Get it out of relationships <laughs> because it isn't, it's just an ineffective way of communicating. Um, it, it's a rather, uh, it's certainly an unhealthy way. It's not one that's going to help you get what you need. But, a, but most people who do it, I have to say, they're generally not aware. So they don't always know the insight around it um, is often poor until somebody else points it out. And even then, they, they may still deny it. But what it essentially is, it's a style of communicating, but it also includes some behaviors and certain personality traits that are characterized by indirect resistance. So other people are making some demand on them, but they are avoiding direct confrontation. So they're avoiding actually saying something like, I'm not. I don't like that, or I'm not happy with that, or maybe they're angry, um, but they're not directly talking about it. And so it's almost as if there's an underlying hostility that just doesn't get expressed directly, but it gets expressed in other ways. And and I can certainly, um, if you want me to go through some typical uh, behaviors and typical sorts of things that somebody might see if they're being you know, if, if the passive aggressive behavior is coming towards them, would you like me to go through some of those things? Yes. Yes. We would love that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so obviously, you know, like I just said about avoiding direct communication, but it, the communication will come in um, the form of perhaps complaints or a lot of excuses, uh, a lot of blaming other people. They might play the victim. You'll often see a lot of procrastination um, or forgetfulness, but but it's like you might be skeptical of that because someone will say, oh, I forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. Or they pretend or say something that makes them seem like they're going to comply with what you're asking, but it's fake. They're not really complying. They're not really going to do it. Um, they may even say something sarcastic. Uh, I would say the, the the worst end of it is the person might even be vindictive. So if they don't like something you did to them, they will in an underhanded way get you back. Um, so those are some general examples of passive aggressive behavior. So um, sometimes it, it goes from being very, you know, very irritating to destructive um, in, in, in a relationship if somebody is communicating in this way. And what generally tends to make somebody more passive aggressive than others? Um, Well, that's that's a good question. Yeah, we always want to know, well, why? Like, why is it difficult for someone to just express themselves directly? And we don't have exact causes, but certainly, you know, as usual, this probably won't surprise you, but those patterns often start formulating in childhood. So in somebody's family of origin. And usually if people are eventually communicating passive aggressively, or even if they're really avoidant or some of those other styles, um, it's often because they weren't allowed to express themselves as a child. So their emotions, their thoughts, they weren't validated. They were maybe given a sign that expressing themselves is unacceptable. Uh, sometimes people feel um, felt powerless in their family, especially if there was abuse or harsh punishment. And so they couldn't, um, they couldn't express themselves directly. They couldn't say, um, you know, I, I don't like that you did this to me and it hurt me or whatever it is. And so they, they don't develop that template that, or that it's safe and it, it's acceptable to directly express your feelings. So we know that a lot of it will stem from that. Um, and then it certainly can also come about depending on the life situation somebody is in. Let, let's say they're in a job for, um, for many years and or, or even starting a job, but they see that right away there's a major power differential and they have a boss that's very harsh and very scary. And so it's not socially acceptable for them to maybe um, directly say, Hey, this is, I'm being treated unfairly here or or whatever it is they want to say. So they don't feel like there's an avenue to do that. So then they start doing the other behaviors that are passive aggressive. They might 
complain, they might forget something, they might say they're going to do something and then they don't do it, um, or um, or they're pouty. Um, they, so they're kind of going around like that because there's no other alternative. They, they, there's no way for them, it's blocked. Um, so I would say mostly we're, you know, we're looking at the childhood stuff and then we're also looking at situational uh, situational things that would foster passive aggressiveness. So we want to dive into both sides of this and, and I want to explore a little bit more about someone that's being passive aggressive, but let's address the person on the receiving end. How can we communicate with our partner that we don't appreciate that style of communication or, or what's the first step to, to dealing with an, a, a passive aggressive partner? Yeah, those, that's, um, it, it's hard. First of all, I'll say it's, it's definitely difficult because you may, you may not know what's happening right away. You know, you might say, Hey, I know this doesn't feel right. It's not right. Or I, or I don't feel good in this relationship. I don't feel safe. I feel something's going on. So you will know in your gut, something is wrong. And then usually people will then start to do their research. So they go to Google or they start coming across some descriptions and some articles, and then the light bulb goes off and, and they realize like, wow, my partner's passive aggressive. And so once they read about it, certainly they're going to get a better understanding of it. Um, but then there, there's a point where they're going to have to bring it up to their partner. And so they're going to want to to just call it out, really. They're going to want to be direct about it and say, here's what I think is going on and here's why. And um, and then they may want to go underneath a bit because, you know, based on even just what I, what I talked about initially is that it's often this underlying hostility or anger. So somebody is unhappy with something. They just don't feel like they can directly tell you. So I would want someone to make it safe to, for that expression and to have that open dialogue. So um, the partner can stay just really present with them and, and just be open and say, are you, you know, is there something you're upset about? Are you angry about something? Is there something I'm doing that's bothering you? Uh, what makes it hard for you to just tell me? You know, is there anything I can do to make it easier for you to just be direct and just tell me if I upset you? Tell me if you're bothered by something. Um, so you're going to want to kind of call call them out on that underlying anger piece. And then you're certainly going to want to set some limits and boundaries around it. You know, and just say this, you know, if, if it doesn't start to improve, you'll want to say this is this is unacceptable. You know, this isn't going to work. We're, we're going to we're stuck here um, if we can't figure this out. And I'm really seeing what I can do to make it easier for you to communicate. But, you know, maybe at that point, if it still doesn't get better, um, you may need outside help and someone who can work with those types of dynamics. But in the moment, I like people in real time. So if this happens to you, you would say, look, I think what you just did, you know, is being passive aggressive. You, know, you just made that sarcastic remark. That's an example of, you know, of being passive aggressive. I really, you know, it, it hurts me when you, when you say something like that or you act like that. Um, it doesn't land right for me. You know, can, can you please rethink how you're, how you're wanting to communicate that? Um, so call it out. I would say call it out right away when you see it. Before we continue on, we want to tell you about today's sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We talk about it a lot on the show, and that is going to a professional counselor or therapist. And Sarah and I finally both started seeing one about a year ago, mm -hmm. not even. And we go individually and as a couple and as much great information as we get on the show from our guests it's really been invaluable for personal and relationship insights for both of us. Yes, it's been a true game changer for our relationship and we really cannot encourage it anymore. And, and you all may be saying like, wow, it's going to be a lot of energy to drive, to spend the money. And that's why we want to, we want to tell you about BetterHelp because BetterHelp connects you with a professional counselor in a safe and private 
online environment. So you guys can do it from your home and you can communicate with your therapist via text, chat, phone, and video. And you can choose from over 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states that specialize not only in relationships, but also depression, stress, anxiety, self-esteem, anger, trauma, and many more issues. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And anything you share is confidential. And if you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. BetterHelp is secure, convenient, and professional. And best of all, like we mentioned, it's truly an affordable option. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash I do. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash I do. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Market. What if I told you you could get high quality organic and non-GMO groceries delivered to your door for a lot less than you're paying right now and help out families in need? That's what I'm doing since I discovered Thrive Market. And as a proud Thrive Market member, I get all the products I love and My paid membership provides a free membership for somebody in need, like a low-income family, teacher, veteran, or first responder. Thrive Market tailors to over 70 different diets and values, like paleo, to keto, to plant-based. They deliver the highest quality organic and non-GMO food, and they also offer clean beauty products, bath products, pet staples, non-toxic cleaning products, plus ethical meat, sustainable seafood, clean wines, and so much more. I just did a huge shopping trip on Thrive Market and I got all of my favorites, which basically range from desserts, like these delicious brownie mint chocolate cookies, like unbelievable, to eye cream and face lotion. So I'm loving how I can pick and choose exactly what I want at the best price. And as a member, I'm saving 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices and their carbon neutral shipping is free on all orders over $49. And not only do I feel great about getting a deal with all my favorite clean organic products, but I also feel great about helping to support families who need it the most. In addition to the membership matching, Thrive Market is matching donations to their COVID-19 relief fund dollar to dollar. So Thrive Market is working 24-7 to make sure members are getting their groceries delivered as fast as possible. And you can learn more about their commitments to their customers and membership matching on their website. Try Thrive Market and become a member risk-free. Go to thrivemarket.com slash I do. Join today and you'll get up to $20 in shopping cart credit toward your first order. That's thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash I do to start your risk-free membership and get up to $20 toward your first order. Thrivemarket.com slash I do. I imagine that the passive aggressor is not going to like being called out (laughs) by their partner. So how can we navigate that conversation? Can we get a little bit specific here? Like, how can we bring it up without them just being defensive in in that conversation, getting off the rails? Because I imagine that's how it would go down if someone that doesn't realize they're doing this and then their partner's telling them it's not going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry for being (laughs) passive aggressive. Let me not do that. (laughs) You know, I, yeah, you'll probably get more of a defensive response. That's pretty common. Um, I would say in the, if you, if you want to open up a discussion about it, you're certainly going to want to couch it in a loving and a, you know, a softer way for sure. But you, but you're still calling them out. You're still saying, "Here's what I'm seeing. I don't, I don't like it. It, it, it doesn't feel good. It's not going to help us 
they love getting connected with each other. You know, you can kind of, you can add all those pieces, but even with doing that, you're right. You could still get somebody who's defensive or doesn't see it. And so I would say, you know, expect that first of all, there is a good chance they're going to be defensive and that they truly don't see it. Um, so I, I would say that piece, like the denial piece of, I don't really see myself doing that. I don't really get what you're saying or, or no, I'm not, is not so unusual. So you may want to follow it up with examples and you can ask permission to do that. You can say, well, is it okay then when I sense it's happening in the moment, is it okay if I tell you, if I point it out to you? Um, because I really, you know, I care about us. You know, I want us to, you know, feel like we're we're open with each other and we can communicate with each other. And I feel like this gets in the way. So if it's all right, if I can point it out, that would be great. So hopefully the person um, has at least a willingness to, to like be given the feedback loop because they do need the, the self-awareness and they may not get it. You know, they may not have that light bulb moment. Oh, wow, I guess I am. But, you know, the other thing is, is you can give them an alternative. So um, you've probably heard about assertive communication and what that means, you know, which is that you, you're, you're saying it in a way that um, will hopefully bring, minimize the defensiveness. So that's on both sides. So that's the person who's receiving the, that passive aggressive behavior and also the person that's passive aggressive. So you can start by, by just talking about the impact it has on you, you know, I feel um, hurt or upset, or I'm not sure what I did wrong, I'm confused, when you blank, and you you usually name the behavior, you know, when you um, tell me you're going to do something, and you swear to me you're going to do it, and you don't do it, um, I think that's, that's the passive aggressiveness I'm talking about, and I feel like it hurts, it hurts me, but it hurts our relationship. So I think you're couching it in a way that is, is hopefully going to bring down the defenses as much as possible. Um, and then you're going to give them another way to talk to you. Say, if you're angry at me, I really want you to just say it. I would much rather you say, um, you know, I don't like this or I'm upset that you did this. than when I ask you to pick up a carton of milk, you don't pick it up and you forgot it or you don't return my text. Um, or you're late to that important thing we were supposed to be at. I would rather you just say, you know what, I'm, un- I'm unhappy about this, or this upsets me. So you're giving them an alternative, so they're not just stuck with, well, I know I can't do this, but I'm not really sure what else to do. So you're, you're opening up space for that, and you're making it safe for them to walk into that space and be direct with you. So what advice, switching angles to those that, are aware that they are passive aggressive in their relationship. Obviously, that's probably the first step to changing that behavior is becoming aware themselves. But what are some tools that they can work on or follow to maybe more in the moment be aware of it so those behaviors are not coming out in the relationship to their partner? You mean what can the partner say right then and there? Um, to maybe help them figure out what's going on or gain the self-awareness? Is that what you're talking about? Or maybe for that that person who is exhibiting those behaviors to kind of be like, oh, wow, I just realized I'm being sort of passive aggressive and changing that or just to start to learn how to stop being passive aggressive to their partner. Um, Yeah, I mean, they're wanting to connect the thought and the, the feeling and the behavior. So they're going to want to want to slow down around that. And you know, maybe almost like what, what we do when we talk about um, mindfulness. Okay. So they're, they're sort of shifting their awareness to inside what's happening. You know, what's coming up right now? Um, do I feel angry? Um, is it setting off or triggering something um, and it could be something from their history it could be that that they're able to connect you know well it wasn't safe in my family growing up to express yourself or have a feeling uh, and so 
that that may be where I'm stuck and I don't I don't realize that I can be direct, you know, that I don't have to be unclear about things or not express myself. So I think people are we're we're kind of connecting those dots all the time. And I think we have to remember that a lot of this we wouldn't even know that wasn't coming up in a relational context, right? That's where it becomes problematic. Because if you're just living by yourself and no one's around and, and all of that, there's nobody to kind of call you out on it. Um, and so if you're dealing with more of the less severe end of things, um, hopefully you have somebody who, who is able to just stay engaged in that and say, you know, oh yes, this is, this is an issue. This is something that I need to stop doing or it's hurting my partner. Um, I think you know, a lot of these things exist on a continuum. So we could have the people that where it's mildly problematic, it's coming up in their relationship and they, they're wanting to problem solve and deal with it. And then we have the more severe end where we're probably even getting into some personality disorder traits and they're going to deny, deny, deny and stay rigid around it and not be open to changing or, or they don't have the ability to gain the insight. You know, so I think it's kind of knowing what you're dealing with and then there's going to be natural consequences of that, right? Because if you're saying this is this is something, a way that you're treating me, it's hurting me, and the person doesn't want to do it or change, it's almost like you have a whole other you have a whole other problem on your hands, you know, because then that's when when the relationship struggles can get um, you get more and more distressed. And more and more problems and issues because they will they will grow. Those problems will grow. Um, so I think if you just have willingness, you know that that if someone just has an openness to the growth, and that sometimes it, it there's no way to be called out on these things if you're not in relationship with somebody else who can who's identifying that and bringing it up. So it's almost like a catch twenty two, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like if you're going to be with someone, then yeah, we we all the time want to want to be improving and want to be making sure that we're not hurting our partner. I love how you mentioned the willingness part because it really is so important to really grow and improve your relationship. But what if you're in a relationship with somebody and you find that they're not willing to change or willing to work on those? I don't want to say bad traits, but those types of behaviors. Sure. I mean, yeah, that definitely is something that people end up dealing with. And so I, I think at, at that point, you're, you're having to recognize what I can you know, change, what I can't change, and what I can maybe affect or impact. Um, and so then at that point, you're, you're then um, doing what you need to do to manage your own, um, your own emotions and your own reactions. You know, so, but you'll also know a little more at that point, because if you're identifying it as passive aggressiveness, you can, you, you'll recognize, okay, well, this, the person's angry about something, right? And you can go to them and say, it's obvious you're angry because I know when you do X, Y, Z, you're, you're maybe angry or upset about something. I'm here if you want to talk about it. And then that's it, you know, and then it's like about you taking care of, yourself and you know knowing when to pull back because you can't change that person that you can't necessarily do anything about it but you can certainly create your own boundaries your own limits and stay with them because that's for your own emotional health at that point that's such a valuable thing to be able to do of like if your partner's being passive aggressive rather than letting that hurt you which is natural or turning that into a fight of turning that into a growth opportunity. And, and like you said, like, even if that person is a bit resistant to it, it's just a way, like, that's how you're going to deal with it. And then eventually if, if nothing's changing, they're not willing to grow, then you're going to have to decide to leave the relationship or not. But that, that situation comes up and it's like, Hey, it seems like, and that will help them. It's like, Hey, it seems like you're angry. Is there something you want to talk about? And that, to me is going to help them sit, work through or overcome their passive aggressive behaviors. Because like you said, these come to our awareness through relationship. And so that could be a great service 
to your partner and it's going to benefit you that you're not having to be on the receiving end of it and everyone goes forward in a better place. Right. Exactly. Like you can just say to yourself, I'm not going to get upset about this. <laughs> you know, like I have to, I have to be healthy and I have to live my life and I have to feel good. And so I'm not going to let their behavior just completely, um, you know, destroy my, my happiness as well. And yeah, if, it, if it's on that other extreme of the continuum that I just talked about, um, unfortunately, yeah, but some, some marriages and relationships and they break up over some of these things because people, people will reach their capacity to want to deal with it. So, so yes, they'll be, they'll be at some point with at that sort of fork in the road as to what they're going to do. Either they're going to accept it more and, and change themselves so that they can adjust better to it, or they're going to think about leaving the relationship. Yes. Marnie, thank you so much for walking us through how to deal with this situation. There's a lot of value here. And before we get into our bonus questions, are there any things that we skipped over or maybe that you want to emphasize when it comes to working through passive aggressive behavior? If you want to hear Marnie's answer to this question, plus our bonus round of actionable relationship tips, check out the Love Tribe membership. Become a member by clicking the link in this show's description. You can sign up with the press of a button or visit our website, idopodcast.com slash subscribe. Hey, Love Tribe. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. As always, all the important links are on the show notes page on our website at idopodcast.com. And while you're over there, we hope you check out our 14 day happy couple challenge, as well as all the free resources we have on our website. And thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next week.